In our second unit, we're going to start solving equations. So this is a little bit different than what we did before, where we were just simplifying expressions. Uh, when we solve equations, the big difference is that we add in the big old equal sign. So that is what we're going to be working with here in these particular problems. Uh, when we're looking to solve a linear equation, it's good to know we're going to start, we're going to learn how to solve all types of different equations, and that'll be about half of what our course is, is just learning uh, how to work with and solve different types and styles of equations. But we're going to start with the simplest ones, and those are linear equations. A linear equation is any equation is an equation that has only one variable. And that variable has no powers or exponents or weird things of any kind. No powers and exponents. There's no square roots. There's no, f the, the x is on the main level. Nothing weird is happening. Um, it's just kind of our most basic of equations. So plain old x, no exponents, and we'll build on things from there. So as we go to solve our linear equations, let's take a look. So here's some, 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 some examples. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to find a value for x that's going to make this statement true. Now you may be able to look at this and figure out what that particular answer is going to be, uh, and that's fine, but what I'd like to set you up with here in these first problems is a process that we follow and a thinking style that we adopt. So as you're doing your own examples, I really encourage you to follow the steps that we go through here and to, to show your work because as our problems become more and more complicated, having a firm establishment of procedure is really going to help you a lot. So in these problems, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get whatever the, our variable is by itself. In this case, it's an x. So when we're looking at this, at this equation, the x is not by itself right now because there's a plus 6. Any time that we're trying to solve an equation, what our goal is is to figure out what this variable is, so we need the variable to be alone. What that means is that anything that's with the variable needs to move out of the way. To move something out of the way, we do what's called an inverse operation, and an inverse operation for addition is going to be subtraction. We do the opposite it will undo what happened. So if I had x and 6 was added to it, what I want to do is I want to take that 6 away to get the x by itself. Now, if you do, because equations are, are very balanced, what's on one side is equal to what's on the other side, anytime you do something to one side of an equation, you also have to do it to the other side of the equation. So once on each side of the equal sign. Uh, you kind of want to think of this equal sign as like this wall that you have to, to pass through. So once on one side, once on the other side. So in this particular case, the plus 6 and the minus 6 undo each other. That was the reason that we did that. And that's going to leave the x by itself. On the other side, I have negative 4 minus 6. And once I do that, which gives me negative 10, I have the solution to what my equation is. So in this case, I end up with x is equal to 10. Now the nice thing about solving equations is that you can, if, if this answer works, what it should do is it should make my original equation true. What that means is if I take my value that I got for x, in this case negative 10, and I substitute it back into my equation, if I were to simplify this side of the expression, this expression here on this side, it should be equal to what's on the other side. And sure enough, negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4, and negative 4 is equal to negative 4, which means I did everything right, good, and fabulous. So this is our process and piece that we're going to do as we try to solve through these equations. Basically what we're doing is we're undoing anything that happened. It's kind of like reverse order of operations. Whatever happens first, we undo it by going backwards. Right now we have negative 4 times x, so to get the x by itself, we're going to do the opposite of multiplying, and the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So instead of timesing by negative 4, I'm going to divide by negative 4 to undo what's happening. And if I do something on one side of the equation, I also have to do it on the other side of the equation. So here, when I divided by negative 4, negative 4 divided by negative 4 gives me a positive 1x, which is exactly what I want. On this side, 28 divided by negative 4 gives me a negative 7, and that would be my solution. And again, you can plug it back in to check. Negative 4 times negative 7 is positive 28, so everything looks good. Okay. 
keep it as we go to solve remember that it's all that wherever the x is that's where we have to try to get it by itself so right now the problem that's going on with the x is that the 12 is being subtracted so it's the 12 that needs to move in this problem right now it's a minus 12 so to undo it we do its opposite operation which is to add 12. on the left hand side 5 plus 12 is 17. on the right hand side my x is still there, but minus 12 plus 12 gives me 0, so this part had dropped out of the equation. And what I'm left with is x is equal to 17. Since both sides are equal, of course, this means the same thing as this, and both of those are fine in terms of solutions. We don't really care too much about how that's written. All right, so let's look at a couple of other little complications that might show up as we're solving some problems like these and see what happens. With problem number four here, we want to get the z by itself. So we look at what's going on on the same side of the equation as the z so we can get rid of it. Right now, it's being multiplied by 14. So to get rid of it, I'm going to divide by 14. If I do this on one side of the equation, I also have to do it on the other side of the equation. So here the 14s cancel out and I'm left with z. On the right hand side, I go to do 10 divided by 14 and it doesn't go in evenly. And so this may seem a little uh, intimidating or confusing at first, but just remember that division bars are also fractions. And so one way that we can think of this is having 10 fourteenths as a solution. And then we just like to have our answer in simplest form. So we can reduce this particular fraction because uh, 2 goes into both the top and the bottom, and I can get z equals 5 sevenths as my final solution for this particular one. And if you multiply that back out here and use all your fraction rules for multiplication, you can verify that that's true. With uh, problem number 5 right now, again, we want to get the x by itself. It's currently being multiplied by 3 fourths, so to get rid of it, what we want to do is divide by 3 fourths. Now, when we divide both sides by 3 fourths, what we're doing here the 3 fourths divided by 3 fourths goes away and leaves me with x. But on this side, really what I have is negative 12 divided by 3 fourths. I'm dividing with fractions. So go ahead and make the first value into a fraction. We don't have rules for dividing with fractions, so we change it to multiply and we flip that fraction over. Um, so we're multiplying by the reciprocal instead. And now we can simplify this expression. Uh, I do notice that 3 goes into both the top and the bottom here. 1 and 4, and what I'm left with is x is equal to negative 4 times 4, which is 16, over 1, or just x is equal to negative 16. So when you're dividing by fractions, uh, we still just divide both sides. We just follow, have to follow our fraction rules. Um, Okay, and then when we come to this problem over here, we want to get the x by itself. What's going on between the x and the 5 sixths is in the way. So it's being added right now, so we're going to need to subtract 5 sixths from each side. So now I have 5 six minus 5 sixths is 0, so that's gone. And on this side of the equation, I have 5 halves minus 5 sixths that I need to try to evaluate. Now don't forget when we're dealing with fractions, we do want our... Um, solutions to be simplified and so we need, do need to come up with a fraction answer here. Uh, in order to subtract fractions we need a common denominator. Uh, in this case between 2 and 6, 6 would be a great denominator. Um, the first fraction we'd have to multiply by 3 on the top and the bottom to get that to work. So I have 15 sixths. Uh, the second fraction already had 6 as the bottom so we have 15 6 minus 5 6. Now we just subtract the tops, keep the bottom the same, and I have 10 6 as a solution. Kind of okay, but not quite. This final solution, always check to see if your fraction can be reduced. 2 goes into both the top and the bottom here, and I'm left with x equals 5 thirds as my solution.